good morning. This is our penultimate lecture on composite surfaces. Lecture number 39. Here, I am going to be talking about how different patches can be combined together along common curve boundaries. To exemplify this, I will consider only two cases, those of Ferguson patches and Bezier patches. Using the concepts discussed in this lecture, you can later on extend the techniques for baseline surface patches or for other surface patch models. Composite surfaces. This is what the idea is. We need to stitch two patches together at their common boundaries. What does that mean? Means that we need to maintain position, which is C0, slope, which is C1, and our curvature, which is C2, continuity at the boundary curves. Position continuity implies when the boundary curves of two adjoining patches coincide exactly. This would mean physically the slope along the boundary curves is also continuous. We also need to ensure a unique normal at any point on the common boundary between two patches. We can accomplish this by coinciding the tangent planes of the two edges and patches. As I mentioned, the first model is of the Ferguson's surface patch and this is called the F mill method, what we are going to be discussing now. Well, position or C0 continuity is ensured across patch boundaries. So, we have the two parametric directions here u and v. This is the first patch. These are the tangents along u and v. The tangents along u and v at this corner point. Likewise, tangents along u and v at this point and the same for this point. Let us name these tangents. This tangent here is S sub i j. This here is T sub i j. This here is S i j plus 1. This direction here is T i j plus 1. This one here is S i plus 1, t plus 1. This is T i plus 1, j plus 1. This one here is S i plus 1, j. And this direction is T i plus 1, j. As you would notice, the tangents along the u direction are represented by S and those along the V direction are represented by T. Index i is getting incremented along the U direction and index j gets incremented along the V direction. Let us have another patch adjacent to this patch here along the U direction. Likewise, let us have a patch edges into this one here along the v direction. Let us say this is patch 1, this is patch 2 and this is patch 3. This point here is p i j, this here is p i plus 1 j, this here is p i plus 2 j, 
this kind of point is p i j plus 1, this one is p i plus 1 j plus 1, p i plus 2 j plus 1, p i j plus 2 and this point here is p i plus 1 j plus 2. What is this curve here and what is this curve here? These are common boundaries. This one is common between patch 1 and 2 and this curve here is common between patch 1 and 3. Since all three patches are Ferguson's bicubic patches, each of these bounding curves are cubic and so the common boundaries are also cubic curves. And so happens that Ferguson's models innately give us slope continuity along the curves. As you move along this boundary curve, the slope is continuous between 1 and 2 and as you move along this common curve here, the slope is unique along the u direction between patch 1 and 3. What do we need to then worry about? We need to worry about the continuity in the cross boundary tangent. In other words, if I stand at any point here, I would be able to compute a unique normal, which would represent the normal for patch 1 and 2. Likewise, the same here. If I stand here, I should be able to compute a unique normal, which is representative of patch 1 and 3. The same diagram here. Let us say you want to avoid specifying higher order information. Let us work with a given set of data points P i j, where index i goes from 0 to m and index j goes from 0 to n. So, in a sense, all we know are these points. Let us see where this takes us. So, these are the points that we know and let us assume that we do not know anything else. The problem is that we require to fit a composite Ferguson surface over these points. Since we do not specify these slopes as our design choices, we need to estimate them. So, the intermediate slopes S i j along u and T i j along the parameter direction v can be estimated as s i j equals c sub i times p i plus 1 j minus p i minus 1 j over the absolute value of p i plus 1 j minus p i minus 1 j. Note that these points are position vectors. They are ordered sets. They contain information pertaining to all the three Cartesian coordinates. C 
the i is equal to minimum of the absolute values between p i j and p i minus 1 j and p i plus 1 j minus p i j. So, physically what is happening? Let us see p i plus 1 j is this point p i minus 1 j would be a point here somewhere. So, p i plus 1 j minus p i minus 1 j over its absolute value will be some unit vector and c i would be the minimum of two absolute values p i j minus p i minus 1 j which is this minus some fictitious point here p i minus 1 j and p i plus 1 j which is this point minus p i j which is this point. So, in a sense we are considering three consecutive points along parameter direction u to compute intermediate slope s i j. Let me get back not to compute, but to estimate. Likewise, the slope t i j can be given as d sub i times p i j plus 1 minus p i j minus 1 over the absolute value of the numerator. So, this here is a unit vector d i is minimum of these two distances p i j minus p i j minus 1 this minus some point here p i j minus 1 p i j plus 1 which is this point minus p i j which is this point. To compute or to estimate t i j we are considering three consecutive data points along the parameter v direction like these. It would be easier for you to understand if we look at the estimation of t i j plus 1. There it will be clear that we are considering p i j, p i j plus 1 and p i j plus 2. So, much so for the slope information. If patches 1, 2 and 3 happen to be Ferguson patches. Recall from our previous lectures that we would need the slopes along the u direction, those along the v direction and also the twist vectors or the mixed derivatives of r at these points. For now, we can assume that these twist vectors are 0. So, a geometric matrix for a Ferguson's patch will then look like G equals the corner points in the top left 2 by 2 region P i j, P i j plus 1, P i plus 1 j, P i plus 1 j plus 1. Here we will have slope pertaining to the v direction t i j t i j plus 1 t i plus 1 j and t i plus 1 j plus 1. In the lower left region we will have slopes along the u direction in the same order s i j s i j plus 1 s i plus 1 j and s i plus 1 j plus 1. This region pertains to the information on twist vectors. For now, we have assumed them to be 0. 
So, this geometric matrix G would correspond to the first patch. Now, we have a slight problem for i equals 0 or i equals m the points p minus 1 j and p m plus 1 j are not known. To counter this, the user now will have to specify the slopes s 0 j and s m j for all values of j from 0 to n. That is, if you look at this figure, if I move along j, which is along the v direction here. For j equals 0, which would be somewhere here, let us say, we will have to specify s 0 j's. And for j equals m, somewhere here, we will have to specify s m j. Likewise, slopes t sub i 0 and t sub i n for i going from 0 to m will also need to be specified. In summary, slopes along the u and v parametric directions are to be specified on the boundaries of the composite surface. Now, this model works well for evenly spaced data points, but local flatness or bulging due to zero twist vectors this year happens to be a problem. Let us now look at composite Augustine surface with non-zero twist vectors. So, we are working with the same figure here. We can avoid local flatness or bulging by computing the twist vectors as opposed to assuming them to be 0. Well, to do so, we can impose the C 2 continuity condition at patch boundaries. Now, you have seen this compact form of Augustine's cubic patch before. R super 1, which is the equation for this patch in terms of u and v is equal to the row matrix u times the Ferguson's coefficient matrix, the geometric matrix, the transpose of m, the transpose of v. u and v contain one linear, quadratic and cubic terms in parameters u and v respectively. The geometric matrix G super 1 for this patch as you know is P i j, P i j plus 1, P i plus 1 j, P i plus 1 j plus 1. The slopes along the v direction T i j, T i j plus 1, T i plus 1 j, T i plus 1 j plus 1 the slopes along the u direction in the same order and now the non-zero twist vectors represented by chi. So, we have chi i j, chi i j plus 1, which is
which is here chi i plus 1 j, which is at this point here and the twist vector i plus 1 j plus 1 at this point. Okay. To impose C 2 continuity condition, we are saying that the second derivative of this patch with respect to u evaluated at u equals 1 for all v, which is here. So, if you recall the parameter u goes from 0 to 1 here and v goes from 0 to 1 here. So, for this common boundary u equals 1 and v is any value between 0 and 1. This should be equal to the second derivative of this patch r super 2 with respect to u and for this patch for this bounding curve u equals 0. Well, we have the expression right here. For patch 1, we use the geometric matrix G 1. For patch 2, we use G super 2. Let me skip all the math and give you a set of final results. Second derivative of R with respect to U. This will involve differentiating this row vector twice. We will get 6 2 0 0 times m g super 1 m transpose v transpose. And of course, this is evaluated at u equals 1. The second derivative of row vector u with respect to u evaluated at u equals 0 will give 0 2 0 0 times m g super 2 the geometric matrix for this patch times m transpose times v transpose. We can post multiply m with this to get 6 minus 6 2 4 times g super 1 and transpose v transpose is equal to minus 6 6 minus 4 minus 2 times g super 2 and transpose v transpose to get 6 minus 6 2 4 times g super 1 for this matrix equals minus 6 6 minus 4 minus 2 times g super 2 the geometric matrix for this patch. Now, solve this previous expression. Let me repeat 6 minus 6 2 4 times g super 1 equals minus 6 6 minus 4 minus 2 times g super 2 to get this equation in terms of the slopes along the u direction s i j plus 4 times s i plus 1 j plus s i plus 2 j equals 3 times p i plus 2 j minus p i j. Now, if you notice a very similar equation was encountered when discussing composite Ferguson curves with C2 continuity. We will have another equation coming out from this relation, and that would be in terms of the twist vectors chi ij plus 4 chi i plus 1j plus chi i plus 2j equals 3 t 
I plus 2j minus Tij. The right hand side corresponds to the slopes along the V direction. Let us name these equations A and B. And these equations are for index i going from 0 to m minus 2 for a fixed index j. Likewise, if we compute the second derivative for patch 1 with respect to v and evaluate it for any u and v equals 1 using phi 2 continuity condition, we will have to equate it with the second derivative of the third patch, which is placed over R1, as you know from the figure. Second derivative of R3 with respect to v for any value of u and v equals 0. We can do the math. We have u m g 1 in transpose 6 2 0 0 transpose. How do we get this? We need to differentiate now the column vector v or capital V with respect to this parameter v and evaluate that at v equals 1. Likewise, we do the same for v equals 0 to get 0, 2, 0, 0 here. So, this expression here will be u m g 3 m transpose 0, 2, 0, 0 transpose. Let us skip the algebra and get to the final result. The geometric matrix for the first patch times 6 minus 6 to 4 transpose is equal to the geometric matrix for the third patch times minus 6, 6 minus 4 minus 2 transpose. If we simplify, we get another set of equations. Now, in terms of tangents along the v direction. T i j plus 4 T i j plus 1 plus T i j plus 2 equals 3 times T i j plus 2 minus T i j. And this one here in terms of the twist vectors chi i j plus 4 chi i j plus 1 plus chi i j plus 2 equals 3 times s i j plus 2 minus s i j. Now, these equations are for index j going from 0 to n minus 2 for a fixed index i. Let us name them equations c and d. In summary, we have equation a equation b for varying index i for fixed j and then we have equation c, equation d for varying j and fixed i. Okay. So, for given information, which is in terms of data points, p i j i going from 0 to m and j going from 0 to n. With boundary slopes s 0 j s m j for all j going from 0 to n and t i 0 
T i n for all i from 0 to m. And twist vectors chi 0 j chi m j for all j from 0 to n. And chi i 0 up to chi i n for all i from 0 to m. And this is getting a little complicated. One needs to solve for S i j with equation A from the previous slide, T i j with equation C from that slide, and chi i j using equations B and D for i equals 1 up till m minus 1 and j equals 1 up till n minus 1. So, for a composite Ferguson's patch with non-zero twist vectors, we will summarize again, we will need data points p i j, we will need boundary slopes s 0 j and s m j for all j's. We will also need the slopes along the v direction t i 0 and t i n for all i's from 0 to m. And also, we will need the twist vectors at the boundaries chi 0 j, chi m j for all j's and chi i 0, chi i n for all i's. Once we have this input, we would be able to solve for all the intermediate slopes along the u direction, along the v direction, and all the intermediate twist vectors. You will need to spend some time all by yourself to understand this. A little note equations A, B, C and D are all tri diagonal systems that can be solved easily and efficiently using Thomas's algorithm. Let us now come to the second model composite Beza surface, but before that let us establish equivalence between bicubic Ferguson's and Beza patches. So, this is the Ferguson's patch here R as function of u and v equals u m sub f the Ferguson's coefficient matrix g sub f the Ferguson's geometric matrix m f transpose v transpose is equal to u m b this is the Bezier coefficient matrix g b the Bezier geometric matrix m b transpose v transpose. So, if we let go of the row vector here u and if we also let go of v transpose here, we will see that m f g f m f transpose is equal to m b g b m b transpose. So, this part here is equal to this part here. Now, given information pertaining to a Bezier matrix, we can get the corresponding geometric matrix for Ferguson patch as m f inverse m b g b m f inverse m b transpose. Post multiply this relation by m f transpose the inverse 
and pre multiply the same by m f inverse. Likewise, if we are given a Ferguson's patch, we can determine the corresponding geometric matrix for Bezier's patch. Let us revisit the bicubic Bezier patch with control points or design points R00, R10, R20, R30, R31, R11, R21, R31, 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 R02, R12, R22, R32, and R03, R13, R23, and R33. So, in terms of the design points that we have seen pertaining to G sub B, we can get the geometric matrix for the corresponding bicubic Ferguson's patch. The first row is R 0 0, R 0 3, 3 times R 0 1 minus R 0 0, 3 times R 0 3 minus R 0 2. Second row R 3 0, R 3 3, 3 times R 3 1 minus R 3 0, 3 times R 3 3 minus R 3 2, 3 times R 1 0 minus R 0 0. 3 times R 1 3 minus R 0 3, 9 times R 0 0 minus R 1 0 minus R 0 1 plus R 1 1, 9 times R 0 2 minus R 1 2 minus R 0 3 plus R 1 3. And the final row is 3 R 3 0 minus R 2 0. 3 R 3 3 minus R 2 3, 9 R 2 0 minus R 3 0 minus R 3 1 plus R 2 1, 9 R 2 2 minus R 3 2 minus R 2 3 plus R 3 3. So, in a sense, gradients and twist vectors. This region here, as you know, pertains to the slope along the v direction, the slopes along the u direction, and of course, the twist vectors here. So, the gradients and twist vectors at patch corners, four of them can all be expressed in terms of the characteristic Bezier polyhedron. that gives us one important hint as a designer. We may after all not need to specify higher order information. In fact, we do not need to go through unnecessary and intricate computations that we have seen in case of composite Ferguson patches. Let us continue with composite Bezier surfaces. So, this here is the first patch. The corner point is R sub 0 0 of patch 1, R sub 0 3 of the first patch, R sub 3 0 of patch 1, and if we need to maintain position continuity here, the point here will also be the 0 0th point of the second patch. Likewise, this point here pertains to R 3 3 of the first patch, this one, which is the same as R 0 3 of the second patch, which is this one. As I said before, these two points are the same to maintain position continuity are these two junction points. We will talk about this common boundary in a while. For the second patch, this corner point here is R 3 0 and this point here is R sub 3 3. 
patch 1, patch 2. This corresponds to the u direction. This one here corresponds to the v direction. From what we know from before on bicubic Bezier surface patches, the first patch R super 1 in u and v can be written as u m sub b g b super 1 m b transpose b transpose. And likewise, the second patch R 2 u v can be given by u m b g b super 2 m b transpose v transpose. Now, let us look at positional continuity. For that across the common boundary, R 1 for u equals 1 and n e v should be equal to R 2 for u equals 0 and n e v. This would mean that a row vector 1 1 1 1 times m sub b the b 0 coefficient matrix times the geometric matrix for the first patch should be equal to 0 0 0 1 times m sub b times the geometric matrix for the second patch. Let me flash this relation for you here. G B super 1 is this matrix here and G B super 2 is this matrix here. Now, this row vector times m sub b is equal to 0 0 0 1 times G B super 1 which is this and this is equal to R 3 0, R 3 1, R 3 2 and R 3 3 for the first patch, the transpose of that. And this row vector times m sub b equals 1 0 0 0 times the geometric matrix for the second patch given by this matrix here, which is equal to R 0 0, R 0 1, R 0 2 and R 0, 3 of the second patch, the transpose. We can summarize these results and say that R 3 j for the first patch equals R 0 j for the second patch for values of j going from 0 to 3. Physically, that would mean that the boundary polygon must be common between the two patches. Here is a figure. This is the control net for the first bicubic Mises patch. And this here is the control net for the second Mises patch. It's patch 1, patch 2. All the conditions that we have seen in the previous slide says that the boundary polygon between these two nets should be the same. This here is a polyline. Let us move forward and address gradient continuity across the patch boundary. For gradient continuity, the tangent plane of patch 1 at u equals 1 must coincide with the tangent plane of the second patch at u equals 0 for all values of v in between 0 and 1. So, let us compute the tangent 
along the u direction for the second patch at u equals 0 and the tangent of the second patch along the v direction again at u equals 0. And let us compute the cross product between these two tangents. So, the left hand side here will represent the normal to the tangent plane. Likewise, this expression here corresponds to the tangent along the u direction for the first patch at u equals 1. This term here is the tangent for r super 1 along the v direction for u equals 1. So, this cross product here is again a normal to this tangent plane. For the two tangent planes to coincide, these normals must be scalar multiples of each other. And that is for different values of v in between 0 and 1. And because of that, we introduce a scalar lambda, which is a function of v. So, what we are saying is the directions of the two normals should be the same, but the magnitudes may differ. Positional continuity further ensures that the slope along the v direction for the second patch at u equals 0 is the same as the slope along the v direction for the first patch at u equals 1. So, we have two possible solutions. This equation is equation A. Case 1, the first derivative of the second patch with respect to u at u equals 0 is equal to lambda of v times the first derivative of patch 1 with respect to u for u equals 1. And case 2, the first derivative of the second patch with respect to u at u equals 0 is a linear combination of the first derivative of patch 1 with respect to u and the first derivative of patch 1 with respect to v. The two scalars we use are lambda of v and mu of v. If you plug in this equation here, you will see that you get the right hand side. Of course, case 2 is a generalization of case 1. Let us look at case 1 in detail. Okay. Partial r 2 over partial u at u equals 0 and v equals lambda of v times partial r 1 over partial u at u equals 1 and v. This implies 0, 0, 1, 0, m sub b, g sub b of the second patch geometric matrix times the Bezier coefficient matrix transpose v transpose equals lambda v times this row vector here with elements 3, 2, 1, 0, m sub b, g b 1, m b transpose v transpose. Now, if you notice, the left hand side is cubic in V. V transpose here comprises of terms 1, V, V squared and V cube. For this equation to hold good, 
the right hand side should also be cubic in parameter v. We already have cubic terms in v transpose here. For that to happen, lambda of v should not be a varying function, but should be a scalar constant, lambda. We can equate coefficients of v. To get 0, 0, 1, 0, m sub b, g b of the second patch, m b transpose equals lambda 3 to 1, 0, m sub b, g b of the first patch, m b transpose. And if we further post multiply this equation by m b minus transpose, we get 0, 0, 1, 0, m b g b 2 equals lambda times 3, 2, 1, 0 times m b g b 1, which converts to r 1 i of the second patch minus r 0 i of the second patch equals lambda times r 3 i of the first patch minus r 2 i of the first patch, where index i goes from 0 to 3. This is the condition from the previous slide. Geometrically, what this condition means is that the four pairs of polyhedron edges meeting at the boundary must be collinear. So, this is the first bicubic patch. This is the second Bezier bicubic patch. These four lines must be collinear. From position continuity, we had already seen that this was a common polyline between these two patches. So, if you notice from the design viewpoint, these eight points are constrained. These four points get constrained because of position continuity, and these four points get constrained to lie along these respective lines to maintain a unique tangent plane at this common boundary. In other words, these are not, so to speak, free choices anymore for us. Let us look at case 2 now. partial of r of the second patch with respect to u at u equals 0, v equals lambda of v times partial of the first patch with respect to u at u equals 1 for any v plus any scalar as a function of v times partial of r 1 with respect to v at u equals 1 and for any v. mu of v is another scalar function of v. This condition gives us 0, 0, 1, 0, m b g b of the second patch, m b transpose v transpose equals lambda v 3, 2, 1, 0, m b the geometric b z matrix for the first patch, m b transpose v transpose plus mu of v 1 1 1 1 m b g b of the first patch m b transpose times this column vector here 3 v squared 2 v 1 and 0. Pertaining 
to partial over partial V of V transpose. In this expression, we must match the degree in V, which would mean that the scalar lambda is no longer a function of parameter V, it is a constant, but we can have mu of V as a linear function in parameter V. Mu 0 and mu 1 are scalars, constant scalars. If we work out this condition and we try to figure what that condition means geometrically, this is the first patch, this is the second patch. The condition gives a more relaxed situation here in terms of how a user can specify data points freely. The second case states that these three edges must be coplanar. Likewise, these three edges also need to be coplanar. So, what do we have? We have a common polyline here that gives us position continuity between these two patches. And then we have this point to be specified such that these four points lie on the same plane. And likewise, for this patch, we have to specify this design point such that 1, 2, 3, and the fourth point lie again on the same plane. These two planes can be different. In this lecture, I have covered quite a bit of material on composite Ferguson and Bezier surface patches. I would suggest that when you are watching this video, you go through each and every step slowly and try to work out the equations all by yourself on a piece of paper. Although I have considered only Ferguson and Bezier models, similar concepts can be used, can be extended to beast line surface patches and composite beast line surfaces. This is only to give you an idea as to how composite surface patches or composite surfaces get modeled.